All right, to make a forage cap, or what I call a forage cap, be a like a medieval for, type 10th century, somewhere in that area, earlier, a little later, they tended to carry through a bit. Forage cap, which would be used for on your head to keep warm. You could set it up different ways with fur around the edges. But the basic pattern will be the round top, the sides, which this is six inches by however measure around your head, which mine happens to be 24 inches. Yeah, I've got a big head. So the top piece, you'll want the same outside length as the length of your head, which it's simple simple calculation I'll put it up simple calculation mine ended up being about eight a little under so once you get that measure the easiest thing to do is take your square piece of paper fold it into quarters take your ruler and half of the half of the diameter of the circle that you worked out, put it in the corner, put a mark at the measurement you made, and just move it around, putting marks all the way around. Then you draw connected little marks, cut it out, and you'll have a circle. But, but well, before you cut it out, that'll be the sew line. So I'll add, I'll add basically, call it a, a three sixteenths of an inch or so to that, and you'll cut it off, which I did here. Your sew line will be just on the inside. So once you cut that, you'll have this, this, and you'll need a one inch strip for the bottom which keeps it from helps keeps it from stretch and adds a little decorative value. You don't have to add it in. If you don't, you'll need well, if you don't, you don't need to add it in. You'll just have to do something else which we'll talk about later. But this is your basic forage cap. It's two pieces. There's other things you can do to it which I'm doing to this, but the two pieces will form up. You'll sew this together. Sew this in. And it looks kind of like a bucket in a way, which it kind of is. But it's also, it's, you make it out of cloth, leather. I'm using leather. So once you cut your pieces out of your leather, once you have your pattern, you'll end up with this, this, and the strap, bottom strap, which I'm doing, adding into mine right now. That'll be the basic hat. I'm working on punching this out, which should be coming right up here shortly. After your pattern is all cut out, then it's time to punch the holes. There's several ways to do it. I just recently got in one of these, and they make quick work of it. You don't have to buy any of this to do this, but this just makes things faster. And these can be had on Amazon, Hobby Lobby, most any places. There's a cho there's choices between punch widths. This one's a four millimeter, which is kind of short stitch, as you can see from the holes. The other method you can do is take a ruler, and if you're going to use millimeter, set it up on the millimeter, put it along the edge that you want marked. And then take a pen and draw a straight line. Down along where you want your marks or where your holes. Then you go in and count off your what your width is. Say you want five millimeters. Okay. So you put one line there and since each centimeter 
is 10 millimeters for the Americans that don't know this. If you go five, then you put another mark at the five. Just continue down the line. This is a little slower, but it'll get you there. After a while, you don't even need to do this. You can just go through and eye it because your eye is a really good gauge after a bit. Then you take your punch. After everything's all said and done, Set it on your intersection right there and push. Push straight down and make a hole through the leather. Then go to the next one, push straight down, make a hole through the leather. You do this on both sides of the pieces you want to sew together. And if you start at a corner and go out and everything's done right, everything should line up and sew in. Little variations will happen. It won't really matter a lot unless they add up down the line, say you get six millimeters in between this and five millimeter in the other piece then you'll end up with shortening it up which can work to your advantage once you get to doing things but for this it's gonna make a difference so what's once all that's done you punch all your pieces where you want everything sewn together which will take a little planning ahead then you can start sewing When you're punching holes, you start out on the end, start working it in, following the edge, however far in you want to sew. Your last hole, as you can see right here, put the first one in, that way you maintain your spacing. Slide the first prong in, line everything up, give it a few taps. I like to use the end of a piece of wood, four by four, two by four, whatever. It allows you to punch in. It doesn't really hurt anything. It doesn't. It takes quite a while before you start wanting to roll the leather down into a trench like you do here, and that'll, which causes problems, and it'll start throwing your line of holes off as the leather moves around on you. Plus, also, there's less damage to the end of your, to your tools on the ends because you're just pushing through the end grain. Okay, once you have all your holes punched, what I did was on the bottom, I counted the, row, the holes in this and the holes in this to make sure they were the same. Most of the time they are if you're, everything's done right. If not, sometimes they're off a little bit, so you have to make a little bit of adjustments in your sewing. But what I'll do is this is the band around the bottom of the hat, so I'm gonna put it on first. What I like to do since I'm using fairly heavy needles and hemp cord to sew this together. I got my length of hemp cord that I've waxed, the needle, a needle on each end because we're going to be doing a saddle stitch. So I pull it through. That's the first stitch. Get hold of the other needle. get it halfway. All right, at that point you got your first first stitch in. Open up both holes a little bit. Be kind of careful on this first stitch until you get the other everything in, not to jerk this too tight. Come back and grab your other needle. And back through the same hole. I'm using blunt needles on this. You don't want sharp needles because your holes are already done. sharp needles you'll be forcing new holes in and that's not what you're after okay your first stitch is done so it says sewing down half and then sewing all the way back this is actually a stronger stitch and it's easier open your holes up a little bit 
you don't really have to do this, especially if you're using a thinner thread. I like to do it with this heavier hemp, just it makes my life easier. And then just continue this the whole way down. You can do this watching a movie, watching TV, doing, doing whatever. Pull it tight, that's what you'll see forming up. Let's go to the next one. And this is just a continuous, continuous bit of fun. Yeah, and when I get this sewn down to the last of the thread, I'll show you what it is. I won't inflict you, I won't inflict watching me stitch this together on here upon you. Shoot that through. Always make sure you grab the right one. Because if you don't, you'll un undo it. That's a simple saddle stitch. We'll sew down the whole length of this. I keep my thread shorter. It's easier to work with where you're not pulling through two and three yards of thread at once because it's easy enough to add in. I'll show you that here shortly. All right, we're at the point where I'm running out of thread. So what I'm gonna do is we pulled it through you take your all, open up the hole. Don't worry about really pushing it open too far because they will close back up. As you can see, I've opened up every one of these and they've closed up around. You just don't want to punch them out where you remove material. Go back on itself and these kind of tend to lock on themselves a little bit. again this is kind of thick thread so pull it through then I'll go back here. trim these off cut these off later you get another length of thread cord put a needle on both ends and you start here the same way pull it through where your stitching left off pull it through there half it up and just start stitching all the way down through like you did the rest of it until you finish up the length where you're sewing. Normally I would have glued this down with rubber cement to help hold it down. The whole bottom edge is stitched. This is the bottom band of what's going to be the hat. And before I started the stitching, I punched the holes in this side and this side. I could have punched through here, but I didn't want to trust my measurements on how everything worked out. So what I planned on doing was sewing this down, then going back through and pushing the punch through the holes and punching the back side where I can sew this top band down. Because instead of gluing this down like I could have done and then just punched it all out pretty evenly, there's going to be a cord running through this. This is going to be 
kind of a modification of a medieval hat. I'm going to turn it into kind of a forage hat also. So I want a cord running through this. So that kind of leaves out the glue. So that changed how I'm going to do it, which there's probably different ways, easier ways, but this is my way. <laughs> it's, it's working so far. So we've got the holes punched up through here and you can see where each of the holes was at. You take the last tine again, put it in the hole, and then kind of work it around, you'll hit the other holes. Then, you tap it through. You walk that down the whole length of the cord, or the top of the band, which to take probably 10 or 15 minutes as you're pushing through. Then you can go back and sew it like you did this, which is just a simple saddle stitch, two needles and the thread in in the hole from this side, in the hole from the other side, pull tight. One complete stitch all the way down. Okay, once you get the bottom band sewn on, sew up the back, and I overlapped it. Trimmed off the bottom band just a little bit so everything fit in there. Stitched it up tight. And then you start around the top. You end up sewing all the way around, and you'll be pretty much done with the hat. To get the to get the cord through, I'll put a picture up of what I did. Is before I sewn up the back right here. I took a coat hanger, bent it out, and bent a little loop in the end, and run this thread through the end and pulled it all the way through while it was still straight. Then I'll use this to pull the other cordage through once it's done, the other that I'm making. I'll show that on video of pulling it through. But beyond that, it's all just simple, basic stuff. Sewn in. Just general. Simple. This is the pocket with the antler button. Simple cut. This is just two layers that were sewn that are glued together. They're being sewn together around the edge. So this this hat will have a little hidden compartment. The easiest way for me to stitch this, especially if you have more than after you have all your holes punched, I'm using hemp which is a fairly coarse thread. If you were using like a bonded nylon or something along that line that's a little thinner, you probably wouldn't need to do this so bad. But I take an awl, I push through all the holes, and if you're careful, you won't drive new holes. Just follow the old ones through. And all that does is that opens them up, that pushes all the fibers to the side. So instead of actually punching a hole through it where you're taking fibers out this pushes them aside and as you can see I've done this to all of them they'll sure sh it'll shrink back down on itself so the saddle stitch you pull the thread through and then take the other side and come in behind this is why I open up the hole pull it through and pull it tight and there's a stitch and you continue this all the way around until you're done and you'll end up with a hat a bag or whatever you're trying to do but in this case it's a it's a hat <laughs> 